This FFPC NFL Playoff Challenge edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, get $100 at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T state restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the S G P N NFL playoff challenge, $500 in cash and prizes up for grabs exclusively on the S G P N app. Hey everybody, Jim McMahon here, and you're listening to S G P N let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking That Money Green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Sean. Hello. Welcome to the playoffs. And the Kramer FML tour has still not restarted. <laughs> we, can we discuss this? No. It's been a five year tour, six year tour. Really? And what are you basing that off of? Just postseason appearances, <laughs> generally like Fuente <laughs> happening. Oh wow! Like, uh, every- Are you worried you're jinxing it by pronouncing the post uh, the Kramer FML? No, I'm over jinx. Over. I'm too fucking old for that shit. Okay, too I old say what for I jinx. Say. Says what he wants to say. You want keeps it real. I mean, you like the rocking chair on my porch. Oh, Ryan, you've had a number of uh, rocking chair moments. Yeah, you versus the media. You know what uh, I realized? Last week was a fun old guy thread. I realized I wasn't putting it. Oh, maximum effort was headed toward the picks, but maximum effort was not headed toward the podcast. So we had to r- ratchet up the people were, were yearning for the days of all rise Joe Judge, and I realized oh, I need to bring okay. it a little hard. What is what is the what is Brian Dable? Because as you said, oh that um, th- it you doesn't predicted have to be they're a... going to get knocked out in the first round because no, they no. didn't play their starters. That is not what I said. Oh, okay. I said they're going to come out flat as shit okay. in the playoffs. I'm changing my tune though <laughs> as the game nears. <laughs> wow, shocking development! Ryan has talked himself into the cowardly. Let's go, c- cowardly. Brian Dable. All right. Maybe it was the right move. I don't know. We got a great episode for you today. We're going to be talking fantasy football. But hey, you're looking to bet on football, the ultimate fantasy. I'll tell you my ultimate fantasy spinning that win bet parlay wheel. We're going to be out in Arizona doing a week of shows leading up to the Super Bowl. And uh, what better way? I mean, we're going to be in, in Arizona. I'm going to be firing up that win bet app. I'm going to be firing on all cylinders. Sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. Bet $100. Get $100. Of course, state restrictions apply over there. There's just so many ways to win over at win bet. Um, again, cannot recommend it enough. Go to the link so they know we sent you. And again, in game wagering, parlays, player props. We will be building our own win bets tomorrow live in the win bet studio in Las Vegas. The NFL playoffs are here. Get involved. Sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at win bet. Come to 21 or older and present the state where play through win bet is available. If you're somebody you know is a gambling problem, go 100 522 47 hundred joining us on the line. You know, him from the SGPN fantasy football feed, AKA show. He is a commander legend of his own, right? Uh, Mr. Andrew Rob, what's happening, Andrew. What's going on fellas, man. Glad to be here. Spent all last night creating teams for the FFPC <laughs> challenge playoffs. And you know, it's, it's funny. Like you can get real unique with some of this stuff and you can go real chalky. So I think a good mixture of both is, is what we need to aim for. But uh, you know, breaking news, Scott Turner fired for the commander. So uh, you know, good way to start off the show already off to a great start. I was laughing uh, when I was on my Twitter timeline earlier where uh, it was a comment from Andrew responding to one of the commanders beat reporters where Ron Rivera says the process that led to Carson Wentz was a good process. And, what? and Andrew's like, I 
slightly disagree. I think this is a really bad. And I and I was chimed in, uh, you know, just firing firing shots from the back. I just go any process that leads you to Carson Wentz is not a good process. Well, it doesn't help that Sam Howell looked. I mean, obviously week eighteen, I and, get it. And and start and rookies have a tendency to look good that first game, but. I mean, what were we seeing else? Like, what? It wasn't like we had someone lighten things on. You went back to Wentz. You went. You went back. Yeah, to I, that's. I, I'm. I. I think. I overall, get it. Like overall, bringing in Wentz was a bad idea. But even their progression, Wentz to Heineke. Okay, Heineke gets you a couple wins. He's like a tough guy to like not have on your roster. But once the Heineke experiment ended, that's when you start the Sam Howell experiment. The going back to Wentz in between. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. Like that was the time to go back. I know you were still alive for the playoffs, but you gotta see. I, it would have been better to see at least a few more games with Hal, right? 100. percent Hal or Heineke was a better option. You know, obviously there was rumors in the locker room that people didn't want to play for Wentz. So I mean, how can you go out there? <laughs> with the playoffs on the line and put Wentz back in the lineup. I mean, it just wasn't a smart move. It's a fireable offense for Rivera. Get them all out of there. You know, ho hopefully this is just day one of firings for the commanders. Yeah. I hope they keep Ron Rivera around. I hope they, uh, he never sells the team. <laughs> you this got is that all... hot take <laughs> drop because sure. Jesus Ron Rivera, who brought this franchise through some very trying <laughs> times leader of men. All right, enough what? talking about the commanders. We're here to talk about playoff teams, Ryan. Oh, wow. Okay. AKA <laughs> the Eagles. That's the so mean. Giants. Sorry. Shots uh, fired. No, well, come on. Uh, we're here to <laughs> it talk. Does, so, I mean, the only team in the division that didn't make the playoffs was the commanders. <laughs> the, the dream of having all four NFC's teams uh, wasn't able to be pulled off. But, okay, so we're going to be doing our FFPC uh, playoff challenge lineups $200 to enter. And uh, if you use our link, you get a $25. Uh, free credit sports gambling podcast.com slash FFPC. Here are the positions. You have a quarterback, two running back spots, two receiver spots, four flex spots, a tight end, a kicker, a defense. So you have 12 total guys on your roster. You can only use one from each team. Yeah. One Such a, a simple contest. Very Beautiful. simple contest. Uh tight ends get one and a half points per reception and points in the uh Super Bowl end up doubling. So that's kind of the overall format. It's the most beautiful game. It's the most beautiful format of fantasy football. I really like it. It's it's it, been fun. We've been playing this for years. I know I I won my biggest chunk of change on this contest was in 2017 when I had Nick Foles. And Rob Gronkowski. If I'm not mistaken, well, that was a joint lineup. Was yeah, it not? maybe that yeah. was. We we finished. I think I want to say we finished top uh, ten. I think we won like three or four grand. <laughs> and it was. I mean, again, obviously Nick Foles played lights out, but then having Brock, oh. who had a really good game in the Super we Bowl, we were very contrarian. Yeah, no one. Everyone had the Eagles get knocked out. I I think we even threw this out there. I'm like, Ryan, we got to do a Foles lineup. What if he goes off and takes him on a magical I, run? You're like, all right, fine. It's funny because my handicap on this contest is just all I have is the memories of winning, and all the memories of win winning basically happened for me when both teams in the Super Bowl played four games, which led me down my obvious bias of like it's way more appealing to me to make a lineup built around guys that are playing more. So I, I generally, I, I, and then I went back and looked at how I finished when, when the one seeds make it, when the teams with the buys make it, I don't do as well in this contest. So it, it's uh you yeah, know, no, there's, there's, there's T, a shout out to T Higgins last year. That was uh, just, mwah. yeah. I mean, again, uh, and then obviously last year was weird too, because everyone had Cooper cup on the Rams. Cause it was tough to go anywhere else. Rams get four games. Cooper cup has an amazing season. Yeah. He was like rostered in 91% of the lineup. So and you, needed him you almost had to have had yeah. him. So there's that balance, right? Like you need your Cooper cups in there, but you also need some that are maybe a, a little contrarian, but I, I don't know. It's it, it's weird. Cause well, and is I'm, it contrarian within the team? There there's a lot. And to I'd be, be curious to hear what Andrew's take is, but just kind of basic. Like for me, I think the biggest edge is gained by getting the the teams that you punt correctly, both in the guys that you, the teams you just choose not to pick and the teams that you like fade in the way that you like play a kicker or a defense. 
or it, it, I guess in a in some ways eventually a running back maybe. So it, yeah, I mean it seems like looking at the data, the biggest edge is making sure that you are getting the fade teams right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you? What else you got, Andrew? I'm sure you got some numbers and stuff. No. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I thought. As far as strategy, and uh, you know, I don't want to give too much away because I do have the FFPC playoff challenge article dropping uh, oh. by tomorrow morning, some point. Uh, so there will be, you know, strategy in there. I have positional Ooh. strategy. Uh, you know, we talk about leverage over the field. You know, different stuff like that. But I mean, I, you're you're both correct in in what you're saying. Um, obviously, you want to get two teams that you're not using to be knocked out week one. So you don't have to worry about them scoring points that you aren't going to be able to, to establish yourself. Um, obviously, you know, you want to try to get like kickers and defense, right? You want to try to get teams that probably don't lose week one, but probably don't make it past week two. You know, you don't want to go chiefs defense. Cause they're going to make it. I mean, it, how many times is the defense going to outscore the, the positional players? You're, and yeah, you have to remember like, okay, like weekend one, eight guys left. You want the you most likely want those eight guys to be a quarterback, a running back, and seven and six pass catchers. Like that to me is yeah. optimal. Yeah. So uh, after after kicker and defense, probably the next position to Kramer's point, you want to lose is maybe those official running back spots. And it does seem the teams that go heavy receiver over running back end up doing better in, in here. It's, Obviously, it's, it's just full like point DFS. PPR. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in the same way with DFS. You want to get your flex spot, uh, probably to a receiver or at least a pass catching running back that's going to get involved. Now, I, I in this lineup, I, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty chalky. I ended up going oh, two tight ends. Nice. Well, that was the other thing. It's, 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 fan, it's tight end premium. So I do think, you know, the data again. We looking at the data. It was I think it was like uh, top fifty was like one and a half tight ends, which is probably less than you would think, considering you can roster five tight ends and you get that bonus. I feel like in some in some uh, yeah in some situations I or in previous years I think I had like a three or four tight end build. If it makes sense, it makes sense. I think. But like this year has been weird for tight ends. I mean, besides yeah. Kittle and Kelsey, who are you really? Maybe you get cute and you play Dallas Goddard, but. Uh, it, it I, I don't know. Like, there's just the, you're not getting much out of these tight ends. You could go super contrarian with Hawkinson. I feel like I've gone off the rails when I've gotten super cute. You know what I mean? Like for me, contrarian means. Uh, I think the way you get contrarian is in the teams you fade, fading teams that are maybe favorites in week one, small favorites, or you know, not going to like the third guy. Like, don't play KJ Osborne for the Vikings. That's a bad play. Uh, if you want to talk about playing Dalvin cook over Justin Jefferson, I think that's, that's where we're talking yeah. fading, right? Like don't go completely off the board. You know, you no, should I mean, be I th I think no you, Deandre Carter. No, it's not hard to sit down and think about each team. And so like ignoring the fact that teams are going to be picked at different rates, like Kansas city, probably a hundred percent team like Miami, probably not a hundred percent. Uh, if you just think about each team and which guy on each team will be like the most popular play, it does get tricky because it's not standard DFS. Like the guys playing on this platform are generally a little sharper, but you can still kind of predict what chalk will be. And so, yeah, I mean, like talking with Andrew before, it, it does seem like you got being chalk. Like if you didn't have Cooper Cup, you didn't cash yeah. last year, for example. Uh, or you didn't cash anything significant. And so, because he obviously hit and obviously. The, the logic behind fading that is if Cooper Cup had failed, but it, you don't have to be contrary in that in that state. Let's just talk about the lineup. Yeah, let's get to it. Kramer, you, have you really honors. want me to go first? Sure, Mr. Daniel Jones. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter what I do the rest of the lineup because I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a guy I think will be playing in four games. Remember, the Super Bowl counts twice. Dan Jones. I mean, come on, no. Uh, Barkley well, will be chalk on the Giants by a by a mile. And yeah, you're you're at the very least you're getting leverage off of. And let's be Saquon real, Barkley. Let's be real. Yep. There, there's a couple games here where it's coin flippy. This game just happened, and it was coin flippy. So uh, the fact that I, you know, I, in my mind, the floor is two games. Is okay. that a jinx? We're, no, we're, I mean you're strictly, strictly, strictly you're speaking in fantasy terms. You're guaranteeing victory. How could you? How could you possibly jinx? I watched that? a game that if they replay that ten times, the Vikings only win one or two of them. 
<laughs> that is a very optimistic take so, on that. So uh, I, I think most people would agree with me. So Daniel Jones, <laughs> aka right. Dan Jones. I love how you're digging in. It's for contrarian. A, yeah, that's that's the best thing you can say. What you want me to come out here and say Josh fucking Allen? All right, no, I'm no, better than that. No. I told you I was stepping my game up in 2023. <laughs> Dan Jones. Dan Jones. All right. I you love don't, you don't have to. Lineup. You don't have to explain it more than that. Andrew, what do you got? Who's your quarterback? So uh, I, I cannot decide if this was going to be chalky or not, but I took Patrick Mahomes. Um, honestly, I think a lot of people are going to take Kelsey. So I think this yeah. pick could potentially be more contrarian than we believe it to be. But yeah, Patrick Mahomes can't pass it up. If, if they're going to make it there, it's going to be on the back of Patrick Mahomes. So I'll put him in it. I think Josh Allen's ownership is going to be through the roof because you have them playing week one. You have, uh, I, I think Steph Diggs is actually contrarian. Again, as crazy as it sounds, I think Allen's going to be so played so often that Steph Diggs ownership is obviously going to get eaten into. And because he's getting that fourth game. Hurts, Mahomes are like the other obvious choices, but they have a bye week. So there's a huge difference. And everyone's talking about the narrative. Bill's getting into the uh, playoffs. I think the Bills I think, are the most going to be the most. I, I, I think Josh Allen's ownership is going to be, I think Josh Allen, uh, could be the most known player without being disrespectful. Every single bills thing, this postseason is going to be overvalued in some way. Yeah. But I'm with you. I, I do think Josh Allen is just so it's so easy to be like, Oh, the best fantasy quarterback the guy gets points everywhere. And he plays and, week and, one. And maybe they go on a nice run and you know, it, certainly there's a world where he pays off. Will you play a two lineup? If he plays <laughs> week one, you could maybe talk <laughs> me into it. Uh, that's it. That's too cute. Yeah, he's that's, not, that's he's not my player team. pool, Sean. <laughs> uh, for me, you know, there was I. I mentioned this to Ryan. I mentioned this to friends and family. But um, wow, Eagles were given a day off on Monday. You know, <laughs> clinching the one seed, and uh, Jalen Hurts requested an extra film session with Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni. How he that is leak? a rare breed. He is a. He, he's. Dude. I just love that the media got a, got a hold of that one. They dug deep. Send it over on the fax machine. Hey, J deep throat. I got a story. You forget the uh, one Jalen hurts on the goal line. Uh, Jalen hurts willing runner Jalen hurts in must win situations. This is when he thrives. This is when he gets the rushing yards. Jalen hurts lock it up. And the he fact that Josh Allen is playing week one, I think it's going to eat into his ownership. So I don't think he's going to be as chalky. Like I was I, very confused by Wink Martindale's defense. No, not at all. You mean when they put up? Well, they he won said forty-eight not, his, to twenty-two. His, his words, not mine. Okay. His words, not the second time. Okay. His words, not mine. Good pick, though, Sean. Thank you. I'm not I'm really not, shocking <laughs> Homer pick there. I uh, yeah, all in on uh, Jalen Hurts. So let's go, Kramer. Who's your running back? RB one. Perhaps this turns out to be the too cute play, but I remember what he looked like in the postseason. I've been drafting the shit out of him. He might be my highest owned guy in the gauntlet. It's Jarek McKinnon. Mm. It, just an easy, an e absolutely easy way to play the Chiefs. I think the, I think Andrews n nailed it. I, I think Mahomes will still be pretty high up on the quarterback list, but compared, to, he'll probably two to one Kelsey. If I'm, yep. if I'm guessing. Kelsey's ownership probably north of 50 Mahomes uh, half of that maybe yeah especially with the tight end scoring and you know it, it's premium scoring in this so I, I really think it's going to be Kelsey as the most owned Chiefs player for sure it's the most beautiful scoring format too if you've never played in an FFPC thing that one and a half points for the tight end just not only does it make things like when I say that Kelsey's my number one overall player and tight end premium turn out to be true but it just adds players to the player pool and it's a good format it, it everyone should adopt this format. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, if Chiefs anyway, get into the Super Bowl, you're getting three points for Kelsey. For catch yeah, for Kelsey. Absolutely, but I I feel like you're also like that teases people into taking too many tight ends because I think what that data showed us was that compared to all teams, having less tight ends was actually more optimal in terms of cashing last year. Um, but yeah, Jerick McKinnon, I think probably falls somewhere a little ahead of Juju uh, in terms of the the other ways that people will play the Chiefs. Um I, I can't imagine there'll be too much Kadarius Tony in this type of thing. Like that's that's unnecessary. You're not getting any discount for playing him. You're getting a little cute. Uh yeah. what do you what do you got here, Andrew? Who's your first running back? You want me to skip Ryan? No, no, I what what do you mean? Ryan oh. said Jarek McKinnon. I got McKinnon. Oh that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took uh 
for the running back, the, the, the way that I played this was people, I think, teams that, that can win week one, but probably lose week two. So I took uh, Austin Eckler here. I mean, yep. if, if anybody's going to score on that team, it's going to be Austin Eckler. I think Keenan Allen ha- has a good case as well. I mean, you could you know potentially play Herbert, but I think, honestly, I don't think anyone's going to outscore Austin Eckler. He's just a damn machine. You know, he, he loves fantasy football, so he'll be out there playing for everybody. Yeah, I'm with you. Austin Eckler. I mean, he's setting receiving records at full point PPR for a running back. And, you know, ch- Chargers could get knocked out round one or they could win a game or two. Either way, I think Austin Eckler is going to be a big part of that offense. So, yeah, it's it's an easy play. And I think they're susceptible. The Jags linebackers are susceptible to a guy like Austin Eckler. So, Kramer, what's your second running back? Well, I, uh, Eckler will be probably one of the chalkiest plays overall. Um, which probably pairs nicely with Dan Jones, but I didn't go that way. I went for my second running back in that game, Travis Etienne. I do want to give myself a little bit of protection in this lineup against the fact that the Jags very well could win this game. Uh, it is the Chargers after all, and I think when you're a- San Diego Super Chargers, charge. I wasn't quite. Ch- I mean, I'm pr- pretty certain he will be the chalkiest of Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will be pretty unowned for being a home team and a four seed. And so, you know, I don't mind having the winner of the chargers and Jags guaranteed for next round. I think I also like the the idea of them playing in another high scoring matchup potentially against the chiefs. And so, yeah, Travis Etienne. like imagine if Travis Etienne does advance, you love that matchup against the chiefs. Yeah, uh, he certainly could put up a tremendous game, even in a loss. So I, I don't know how popular he'll be. I, I I'm guessing he'll be. I, I'm curious what you think, Andrew. Do you think what do you think the Jags' ownership will look like? It'll probably go Etn Kirk, uh, Evan Ingram, Lawrence, and then you know to follow. So I, I imagine that Etn will probably be the highest. You know, Kirk will probably be close behind him. Um, but then, you know, at Evan Ingram, I mean, you know, I, almost, I, think, I think, I think Jacksonville could be pretty spread out. I almost played Ingram. People could even talk themselves into uh Zay Jones. He's randomly had a couple massive games late. Yeah. I think again, it's like a price thing when you like Zay Jones is pops in our head. Cause he's been a great DFS play because of his price. Yeah. And I think yep. when you, if you start ignoring price, it's, he's still doing nice things, but I could see people getting cute. I think Jags ownership is going to be pretty split. I could also p- see people talking themselves into Trevor Lawrence making a little bit of a run in the wild card and and playing him. He's at not in my quarterback pool. Herbert no. is. I, I'm definitely going to have a Herbert lineup. Yeah, Herbert's Herbert's certainly interesting. What's your second running back, Andrew? Ah, uh, Saquon Barkley again. I mean, uh, I, I think that they beat the Vikings week one here, uh, and then potentially Ooh. lose right after that. So uh-huh. he. I mean, he's going to be the guy that scores the most points on this team. Like there's just not a doubt in my mind that Barkley is going to be heavily, heavily involved. They know that they need to get him the ball if they really, really, truly want to win this game. Um, So yeah. So Saquon Barkley, uh, you know, same thought process as Eckler in my mind. Yeah. I mean, I I also have Saquon Barkley. Uh, I don't, (laughs) I don't know about him getting, I'm having a hard time breathing with all this chalk in here. Well, all right, right. Uh, (laughs) I don't know about them winning the game, but I do think he either way win or loss. If they win, he's definitely having an awesome game. Even if he loses, I, I think he's going to be the most points uh, coming out of the, out of the giants game. I mean, you look at his game last time they played eight catches, 49 yards, 14 for 84 on the ground and a touchdown. Like that's, that's just tough to replace. Even if Dan Jones runs a decent amount, I, I think it's just going to be so hard for Daniel Jones to outscore him. He did <laughs> throw for 334 yards and a touchdown. Last yeah, time but I mean, four point passing touchdowns. No, and I, he only, he, you know, rushing yards is, he only had four for 34 against Minnesota. Yeah. No, I, look, I, I, I don't hate playing Barkley either. I'm certainly going to play some Barkley. I couldn't play Barkley in this lineup because I have Dan Jones in there. <laughs> Who's your first receiver? Uh, Steph Diggs. Look. I didn't need to get cute um, for this lineup. The, the idea is maybe a bills giant super bowl, little day bowl bowl, a day bowl. Uh, yeah. Steph Diggs, I think will be, what did we say about Kelsey and Mahomes? about two to one? I, I think he'll maybe be a little closer to Allen than that, but 
uh, he'll he'll be number two. I, I I'm not sure where he'll, where he will sit overall with the receivers. He could be he could be the near the top, even being the second owned guy on his team. Yeah, I'm on Stephon Diggs <laughs> as well, uh, but I I do think there'll be uh, probably a couple of people that play Singletary, Dawson Knox. That kind oh, of stuff. in in the FFPC, there's also a bias to running backs in the FFPC. You got a lot of so boom, old, boomers in old, here. Yeah, a lot of old so dudes. <laughs> Singletary will be will be played for sure. Yeah, so I'm I'm on Stefan Diggs uh, there as well. What about you, Andrew? Yeah, make it three for three, Stefan Diggs. I mean, again, I I just think that he's going to have a massive playoffs. If they're really going to make a run, he's going to be heavily involved. I mean, we all saw the photo of him sitting there watching the Chiefs celebrate after an AFC conference. Uh, you know, win. So he he's fired up. He wants to do it now. Obviously, now they can you know have another angle of playing for Demar Hamlin. So, you know, Diggs was was at the hospital and was uh, told you know you can't go in. And he said, "Fuck that, I'm going in there." So, I think that he's going to have a massive playoffs. And and th- there's a reason he's going to be you know really close to Josh Allen um, for for ownership in this uh, in this contest. You think it'll be that pretty close then? I, I, I do. I mean, honestly, I mean, I see that there's probably going to be a lot of Josh Allen played, but I think it's probably going to be a little closer than, than we all believe it, it will be. Um, I mean, it's, it's really no, those guys. I mean, do you want to play Knox? Knox has some randomly good games, but I think in the playoffs, they know who they need to go to. See, I think Josh, I think the bills will be a hundred percent played and I, th- maybe some weirdos won't play, but near a hundred percent played. And I, I how Josh Allen will get more than fifty percent, so I guess it's just it's hard for me. We're, to, we're noting last time Bills played the Dolphins in Buffalo, Dawson Knox was their biggest receiver, six for ninety eight, and uh, a touchdown. He had the long uh, reception of forty five yards. Diggs himself only five for sixty. So again, I I'm with you on the Diggs, but just worth noting that yeah, no. maybe you talk yourself into into some uh, sort of matchup thing there. I'll be curious to see the ownership. And shout out to Fantasy Mojo dude on Twitter who like he man, it's it just a dude who manages spreadsheets. <laughs> you know, I respect the spreadsheet. Uh, so everyone's on Stefan Diggs. So yeah. So wide receiver two for me. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, we were discussing the Jacksonville uh, chargers game earlier. I did go Keenan Allen okay? because I do think the fact that you're going to get Keenan Allen, probably half the ownership is of, of Eckler, if not less is a nice position. He's got a good matchup in this game. You see the usage is back. We're back to where Keenan Allen gets all the targets. Mike Williams is a question mark uh, with the back. I I don't know. I, this is a, I certainly, I don't mind. I kind of like Keenan Allen more than Eckler. If I'm being honest, especially if I think the chargers are winning that game, if they're going to go on the road into Kansas city and win, it's going to, cause it's a receiver is going to have to do something. And so, you know, nice story. Ke- Keenan Allen rested half the season, uh, AK rehabbed, uh, <laughs> rehabbed a, 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 some soft tissue injuries, but he's back now. And he saw, he obviously saw the graphic we put out about him having uh, that Charmin inside of him because uh, he's playing tough. So yeah, Keenan Allen's a fun, fun leverage play on the chargers. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind that at all. But um, uh, worth noting too, uh, Raheem Mostert. Uh, we haven't talked too much about the Dolphins. He's dealing with the broken thumb. Jeff Wilson Jr. Maybe that that's kind of an interesting uh, yeah. play if you're going to go super contrarian. Uh, for me, my second receiver, Justin Jefferson. I mean, the dude is just uh, a beast. I mean, again, you can talk about maybe going Dalvin Cook uh, or or uh, I don't know. Is anyone going to play Kirk Cousins? Doesn't feel like it. Why would you do that when all your points are going to be coming from Justin Jefferson? You know, you have one home game in that dome uh, where he's been incredible, obviously not as good once you go outdoors, but there's no, there's no one on the giants that can shut this guy down. So Justin Jefferson, pretty easy one here. What do you got? Uh, Andrew? Oh, don't fire me, but uh CD lamb. It's my wide receiver too. I, a uh, disgusting <laughs> act. <laughs> I, I just think that you know, the, the Cowboys are going to put up some points. I do think, you know, hot take that they do lose this first game to Tampa. Uh, but I, I really think that CD lamb is going to probably be pretty close to their highest scoring player on the field for, for, for that one game. Um, I think the ownership is going to be really close between him, Pollard, Zeke, Dak. I mean, th- this is a team that I think really the ownership is going to be pretty split between four guys. Um, so yeah, so I think CD lamb, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure which one's going to be the chalk of it all. Could be, could be Dak, could be Pollard, you know, 
Um, but yeah, I, I just think CD Lamb has the opportunity to be the highest scoring person in their one game that they will have. I, I, I got a, I got a straight zero for the Cowboys on my roster. Well, I was going to say, Sean, we'll be good because I, I don't think the <laughs> Cowboys will be in the like punt category. I think most people, I think. I think ownership on the Cowboys will be high. will surprise us. It's so high. I think CD lamb and Pollard will be quite chalky compared to everyone else. Um, Dak will be like the cute play. And I think some people will talk themselves into playing Schultz. Uh, yeah, I think by punting on them. And then when they come out looking like shit on the long grass of Tampa near the pirate ship Monday night, Oh, it's going to be fucking yo ho ho walk the plank Cowboys. Kramer, what do you got? Well, who's I, your first flex? Let's stay on. Let's stay on schedule and just say I'm staying in that game. I I punted the. Oh, no, I I'm sorry. I did not punt the Cowboys. I knew you were gonna play a Cowboy. I'm, it's not a positional player though. It's a, it's it, it's someone who uses their foot. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, but I'll stay, stay in that game. Stay tuned for who that is. Yeah, teaser alert. Soft, Chris, so Chris, you're <laughs> softly fading the Cowboys. I'm, I'm, I'm a full fade. I'm uh, flaccidly fading the Cowboys. Chris <laughs> Godwin is the buck that Ooh, I played. Okay. I mean, I know we finally saw Mike Evans' game or or a quarter or whatever we want to call it, but Godwin is clearly the alpha on that team at this point, and I think he has an insane matchup. We've seen. Uh, I mean. Even uh, even rookie Sam Howell had some success uh, in the range of the field where Godwin's going to be operating. So, uh, even if it's one game, which I don't think it will be, uh, Chris Godwin here is a nice. Uh, and then game two, you know, Tom Brady revenge against San Francisco. Come on. I was going back and forth, uh, and I still am. I had Mike Evans in there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a third running back. What a guy who uh, has a specialty catching balls <laughs> in the playoffs playoff Lenny. Give me Leonard Fournette. You want to talk about where I'm getting contrarian in that's this cute. lineup. That's the cute play. You think that's too cute. not in a bad way. I'm saying that's that's your contrarian. What would you play? do? I, I want to go contrarian here with Tampa Bay. I'm also fading Dallas, but what would you do? Andrew, do you like Leonard Fournette better the playoff narrative or do I go Mike Evans? I I'm not on Godwin with Kramer. Playoff Lenny or Mike Evans? What are you doing? Oh, between those two, I take Mike Evans. But honestly, if you're if you're okay taking a long shot, I'd probably take Rashad White. Uh, he's been the better running back for them. He's he's <sighs> I think going to be used just as much as Leonard Fournette. He looks more spry. They used him much more towards the end of the season. Leonard Fournette was banged up. Rashad White hasn't been banged up. So I mean, depending on how cute you want to go, Rashad White is definitely somebody I'm I'm intrigued by, and I will have him in some some lineups. But for your conundrum, I, I would take Mike Evans over Leonard Fournette. His name yeah. is not playoff Rashad White. Nah, that's true. I'll go. I'll, <laughs> you, you, you talk me back into Mike Evans. I'll do it. Um, I think Mike Evans is pretty contrarian. Yeah. Like I think just play. I mean, the Buck ownership will probably be Godwin and Evans at the top with with maybe some people playing some Brady, but I I don't think I think people are going to be pretty heavily playing the Cowboys like. I think the Cowboys will be a pretty heavy uh, ownership edge to the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, I I think I'm getting contrarian enough just by not playing a Cowboy. So yeah, Mike Evans, let let's go. He Their took, pass defense has not exactly been great. No, right? and and there's been opportunities. I mean, you saw like uh, I think you just said it, but Sam Howell carved up <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the Cowboys, and I'll I'll go I'll go roll the dice with Mike Evans. Like the pedigree, right. like that Tom Brady really likes Mike Evans. What about you, Andrew? Who's your first flex guy? Co-sign with uh, Kramer. I'm going Chris Godwin. You know, I, I've been talking about it through all these underdog playoff drafts that we've been doing. I like Chris Godwin more. I think he's more reliable in the middle of the field. Brady has definitely targeted him much more than than Evans. You know, up until that last game, Evans has been a ghost. So I just think rolling into the playoffs, Brady's going to rely on old, reliable Chris Godwin, and never hurts. Shout out Penn State. True alpha. True alpha. Hey, we're talking. Uh, uh, we're talking uh, fantasy football playoffs here. Have you signed up over at Underdog Fantasy yet? UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN. They're giving away a million dollars in their Gauntlet Challenge, twenty five dollar entry fee. And again, you deposit a hundred dollars over at UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN. You get a free hundred dollars in credit. So UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN. Instant deposit match up to. One hundred dollars. They got daily games. 
uh, for the NBA, NHL as well. But again, get in that underdog fantasy challenge, underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGP, and instant deposit match up to $100. All right, where are we at? We're talking. I give. I think we've all given out one flex. Okay. I'll start with my second flex. Give me Jamar Chase. Not gonna overthink it. He is the guy. I. You can talk me into T Higgins, but I think T Higgins a little bit banged up. He's had some massive games. Again, I don't mind T Higgins. I don't even know what the ownership split will be, and I also think Joe Burrow is gonna catch some decent ownership. So I roughly would predict like a a pretty even split between those three. And you could get real cute, a guy like Kramer, talk yourself into Hayden Hurst or Joe Mixon what? is too much leverage for me. But I, I'm I'm going Jamar Chase. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys what you thought of your of Mixon here because I, I ended up going Chase as well, but yeah. I was toying with Mixon in here. I, I think he could have a pretty sizable workload in the playoffs. But I mean, what are you guys thinking about Mixon? I I, I like Mixon. I what obviously what scares me is the P Ryan pass catching stuff. But but again, it it depends on how chalky the rest of your lineup is. Um, to me, I feel like I'm getting different enough by outright fading the Cowboys by taking Mike Evans, um, my defense, my kicker, you know, just the fact that uh, I'm not going to have uh, Christian McCaffrey in this lineup. So like, those are some big fades for me contrarian wise, but I, I think it kind of depends. Like, I don't, I think you can get to a point where you're, if you try to go too contrarian, you can fuck yourself. And I've been guilty of that in previous years. And I'm not doing that with this lineup. So I think Joe Mixon will be a pretty chalky play. Really? I, I think mix. So you would say maybe it's like a quarter each. Like, how would you break up the Bengals ownership? I think you probably have tier one, which is chase and Mixon. I think you have tier two, which will be burrow. And then you probably have like T T Higgins maybe is in the burrow range where you have like Maybe they're they're like 30, 30, 15, 15, maybe less than that. I, I think I think T. Higgins will be still pretty popular. I think yeah. a lot of the projections that I've seen out there still have him as like a top ten receiver the, because the thing is like it, the people oh, that are playing this are savvy enough into fantasy football to know that usually you're getting a value because T. Higgins is is less price, yeah. but similar results with Jamar chase. And that's what normally his appeal is. But if you completely throw out price, I think Jamar chase is the best play. I think a lot of people are projecting the bangles to go like the fact that the bangles are favored by six points, five and a half points, whatever is like helping their model produce like more expected games played too. So I think the people that just follow the data will will find Mixon to be an obvious a logical play to pe- like to not be like over quote overweight on Chase. So I think Mixon will be more popular than you think. Okay. Like I've seen a, I, I think So the, so on, those are look. my two Hold flexes on. so far, Mike Evans, Jamar Chase. Yeah, like ETR has Mixon as the second most projected running back points to McCaffrey. Okay. All right, then that's then that's maybe he's not as contrarian as I as I would have yeah. thought. What about you? I have, Second I have Higgins. Higgins. Okay. Higgins won me a lot of money last year. So it's a sentimental uh, in, play. in in the in the in the divisional round playoff challenge that they launch in the second week of the playoffs. Uh, so if you feel if you're feeling badly about all your lineups and you want to get back in, they offer that opportunity. And I crushed it last year thanks to T Higgins. Those double points in the Super Bowl are are crucial. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I certainly like playing the pass catchers more than Mixon. It does seem like Samaj P. Ryan is like very trusted, very much could take some of the workload. And I just you look at their path and what it could what it could look like. They're gonna have to pass against Baltimore. They would almost certainly gonna have to pass in a game against Buffalo. And you know, Kansas again, I maybe that's the game where Mixon goes off. That that's the Well, and in a weird way, I think you're also funny. making a case. I do think I'm gonna have a Burrow lineup because I think you're making a good case for Joe Burrow. You you don't have to decide whether it's T Higgins or Jamar Chase. You can just get all those passing yards, passing touchdowns with one guy, yeah. Joe Burrow. I am going to put a, together a Joe Burrow, AJ Brown lineup. Those are the uh, four guys I'd play on the team. Though. I'm not I'm not getting cute. No Hayden Hurst. No. Yeah, that's way too cute. Uh, what do you got, Andrew? So yeah, so I Jamar Chase with you. Uh, next flex for me is uh, this is where we're going to see a. Uh, we're going to see a tight end run here a little bit for me. Uh, I, again, I know you guys were saying that you don't think it's probably optimal to do this, but I'm a guy that that looks at a trend and wants to bucket. 
So I'm going to take Mark Andrews here. Uh, I, I think, Woo-hoo! again, it's it's going to be contrarian for sure. I think this could be a team that people fade. Uh, I don't think anybody really expects them to beat the Bengals. So uh, I'm going to go Mark Andrews here and just hope that he can somehow put up a decent performance in in their loss, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, Isaiah Likely, um, maybe even worth considering. It does no. sound Lamar is back practicing. Don't do Likely. I mean, I love Isaiah. I drafted Isaiah Likely <laughs> in multiple main event teams. I love Isaiah Likely. I don't. I think playing Mark Andrews is super cute. Soup like that's. I would. I'm gonna play a Lamar lineup as we were discussing okay. earlier, Sean. I don't know if I'm gonna play anyone. Like I'll. I don't know if I'm playing anyone else but that. Like maybe kicker. All right. Yeah. I mean, again, I get it. You get point and a half. Um, you're you're probably predicting they maybe win one game. I, you, you could you could kind of make sense of that. So, Kramer, what what's your next flex? What do you got? Uh, let's see. I gave out Diggs, H- Higgins, Godwin, Al. All right. So, how many flexes have you given? Out? I have two left. Okay. Same. Uh, I'm gonna I'll give you my eagle. Because I think this guy fits a profile of the kind of guy that he's going to be less owned than uh, at, at least two of his teammates. He's the number two, so if they if they do get the New York, like great matchup against the Eagles. Also, if they get the Giants, great matchup against the Giants, uh, because Adoree Jackson's going to be shutting down AJ Brown. <laughs> Devonta Smith uh, could see a version of this postseason where he ends up with like. 400 yards and five touchdowns because he's had some big games because they've really been focused on the running game. So you're projecting they they make it to the Super Bowl? I'm just saying, like, I think he has a nice <laughs> ceiling for a guy who is like Hertz is going to be massively owned. I think after that, it's AJ Brown. I I w- I would be willing to bet Miles Sanders is going to be more popular than. Yeah, if you're looking for a contrarian guy that can put up a ton of, he's I I don't know maybe I'm I, wrong. I think I mean he's, he's, ETR actually has him as a top ten wide receiver. That's I think he's me. I think he's kind of in that similar build uh, as T Higgins. I guess I yeah, would just say very similar to me. It's just so clearly one and two on that team. I would be pretty surprised if if Devonta Smith outscores AJ Brown. Yeah, that's why he'll be le- he'll be like half the ownership. Yeah. Well, I, well, yeah, I'm just trying to like, oh. I could see the ownership being like 70% Hertz. I'm looking at ETR. They project them actually only three points apart. So for what it's worth. So you're, you're thinking, are you making a case that he's going to be owned oh, a lot it, or no? Based on people who will follow that. I, I just think there's a lot more gut handicapping in this, in this uh, format or in hey, this I, platform. Yeah. Like it skews older newspaper crowd. I well, think I, I think you're going to see a lot more AJ Brown as a fellow gun handicapper. AJ Brown is Jalen Hurts's guy, so just keep that in mind. That's fine. No, and Devonta Smith could have some massive games. But that's yeah, yeah, that's my. He case. thrives in the against second cornerbacks, and that's what he's going to be facing. What's your uh, what's your third flex, Andrew? Give me Dallas Goddard uh, again. Okay, tight end premium. Didn't even talk gonna... about Goddard. Yeah, I think it's going to be contrarian uh, a, a lot actually here again. Super you guys contrarian. just laid out the case for for the wide receivers, right? People are going to want to play Hurts. People might talk themselves into Sanders. So, I'm going to take Dallas Goddard coming back. Jalen Hurts may not be able to throw the deep ball as well with the issues, you know, going on. So, Dallas Goddard might see more targets coming his way and uh, obviously again, in the tight end premium for FFPC, uh, Dallas Goddard could be very valuable here. He would get he could get a game against the Giants, which we know that is optimal. Yeah, he's had a he had a really nice well, 6 for 46 the one time they played. They he's had an interesting season cuz he was hurt for a little while and then Jalen Hurts missed um a, a couple games, so it's been a while since he's played with Hurts, but you know, he's looked really good in in some of those games. Um you know, you look at uh game against the Steelers was really good. Uh he's had some he's had some nice games. So I I see the I see the uh, angle there, and again at one and a half points PPR, if he gets you seven catches compared to like six for AJ Brown or something like that, that's how you win as far as the Dallas Goddard angle. Uh, for me, my flex, uh, I'm going Tyree Kill again. Now Tyree Kill might be chalky on Miami, but I think people are just going to look at the spread and go, 
wow, wow, Buffalo's going to destroy the Dolphins. Dolphins have no chance. I'm not even going to play a Dolphin. I think Dolphins are going to be one of the more faded teams, them and the Seahawks. So I think even by playing a dolphin skill player, I think you're you're setting your lineup to be fairly unique. He'll be the chalkiest and he's the sixteenth ranked wide receiver. Because is what ETR. expected games played is going to be so 1. low. Right? 3. Yeah, they yeah. they have it close to one, meaning they're gonna lose the first game. Because yeah. they're huge, huge dogs. Who's your who's your third flex, Ryan? Uh all right, so let's talk about it. Do I in this lineup, do I play Debo or do I play Kittle? I, I'm not playing McCaffrey. Okay. Although I probably could, because I I honestly don't know if I like McCaffrey more than one of these receivers. It's on this lineup. It's Kittle, right? I have the flexibility. Andrew, thoughts? Yeah, I don't want to give away anything on my oh, lineup, but oh, uh, yeah, I oh. think Kittle's probably a probably a good play. Yeah, so I'll 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 play Kittle because I'm already I got a lot I got sprinkled in uh, natures of contrarian. Well, yeah, I'm also on I'm also on Kittle. I, I think <laughs> okay. I think Debo. I don't know, man. I think Debo, you're getting a little too cute, and you're already getting leverage off Christian McCaffrey. No, you're like, right. We don't need you're to right. go to that third option. You're right. Um, I I would Andrew. Now maybe this is interesting for someone who goes super hard in the weeds. If you created some sort of scoring system where it's like, hey, here's the number one option, here's the number two option, here's the number three, and then you use those to kind of come up with a point formula where you don't want to be too chalky or too cute, there might be something there. We have a, like a matrix or something. Yeah, like multi-dimensional it, array of. It mm. kind of reminds me of March March Madness, where it's like that final four. You need you want those seeds to add up to twelve or something. I don't know. There. As someone yeah. who dives into the numbers and and does a lot of work, I'll leave it up to you. But uh, that's my that's my starting point idea. Feel free to run with it. Uh, but I think there's something there. And George Kittle, I mean, just look at George Kittle's numbers with and without with and without Brock Purdy. I mean, I've I've had some moments where I've hated I've hated uh, on George Kittle. But let's take a look at some of these look at his last four games mm. 4 for 93 two touchdowns 6 for 120 two touchdowns 4 for 23 one touchdown 4 for 29 two touchdowns this is this, uh, it's insane this run he has you you are between Tua and George Kittle someone was like trapped in a in some sort of no, cryogenic I, I thought, state I thought you know I made the mistake of admitting I was wrong never admit that you're wrong <laughs> and I should have just <laughs> stuck to my guns that Tua was a uh, was uh, shitty but you know George Kittle again. It was more about the 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 NFL writers not oh, okay. giving Zach Ertz that All Pro That's when right. he set I the forget, when forget. you set an all time tight end record and you don't get the award. I, again, I I stand by my tight end tanks. Thank you Chigo Conquo and Austin Hooper for getting me basically a mid sized sed sedan between their two performances. So <laughs> I got I got no hate for the tight ends. I'm a tight end guy. Andrew, what do you got for well, I guess your your flex. I, I'm technically yeah. What, what do you got Christ. in your next flex? So I gave out all four of my flexes. I had Godwin, Chase, Andrews, and Goddard. Okay. So I, I'm on my tight end. Okay. We'll give out your tight end, and then yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we got it. Freestyle. Uh, what? again, George Kittle. I mean, yeah. make a three for three, right? It it kind of makes me think: is, is Kittle going to be more chalky than I think he's going to be? Is is McCaffrey the 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 play here? You know, over Kittle. I mean, no. I I just assumed, and based off of research I did, it looked like McCaffrey's probably going to be the chalk on this team. But as, the more we talk about it, people are going to look at the numbers when Purdy got in there, and uh, you know, you see what the difference is between Purdy and Jimmy G. You know, for for George Kittle. So I I do think that Kittle's hopefully not the contrarian play, but I do think he's probably. He's probably the best play here, especially with the tight end premium scoring. Once again, I think McCaffrey will still have an edge on him. I it might be closer because I I think, you know, it's probably it's tough because Christian McCaffrey is not really a normal running back. Yeah, but. he's gonna he's in, so involved in the passing game. I think people will just, I mean, right? If you have the projections up, I'm sure he he's projects. Th oh, it's it's in, well, it's like McCaffrey, Kittle, and Kelsey are kind of on their own tier. Um, like for so, positional players in terms of points. Yeah. So. Uh, so I've given out, I still have one more flex to give out for me. That is Travis Kelsey trotting no, out the wow. 12 personnel, <laughs> two tight end sets. Ryan, my lineup's going to destroy your lineup. So I would, I'd, I'd be careful with your sarcastic coughing over there. Travis, you're really going to go against Travis Kelsey. I, I have McKinnon. 
We've discussed McKinnon this. is I like McKinnon as a play. Again, I feel maybe I, this lineup thinks the Chiefs are going to lose to the Bengals or or whoever they would play. Well, that's fine by me. I have Jamar Chase then. Or to the Bills. That's fine. I have um, Stefan Diggs. No, no, I know. All right, continue. No, I, 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 I like Travis Kelsey <laughs> here. I think him and McKinnon are pretty close. But if you're giving me one and a half points PPR for the tight end spot, I'm taking Travis Kelsey. All right, deal. Do you now, have any flex or tight ends left? I have a tight end left. Okay, who who is? It? I don't know if the giant strategy to ch- to defend T.J. Hawkinson will change much because they'll have to deal with Irv Smith a little bit now too. Oh, I like this. So um, you're predicting he may Hawk has a big game in but one game. Vikings la- he scored 42 points in this yeah. format last time they played. 13 catches equals a comical 20 <laughs> points basically, but and two touchdowns. And a hundred yards. I mean, that, like that was just for the cat. So yeah, I, I definitely, you know, obviously if the Vikings win, I'm in trouble, but I thought with the, where his ceiling is like a Dory Jackson back for Justin Jefferson, uh, wink has even gone on and said like he, part of the reason he doesn't mind giving up stuff to the tight end. It's usually not a problem. And so I could see Hawkinson having another high volume game where he has a lot of catches. Hopefully they're not the Hopefully they overturn the touchdown if it was actually incomplete this this go around. But yeah, Hawkinson for my tight end. Hot take. Uh, all right, time, and he won't be. Uh, I don't. I can't imagine he'll be very chalky on the Vikings. Time for kicker and defense is my kicker, Justin Tucker, who I personally find kind of annoying. But again, the fact you get extra points for how long the field goals are, I am right now leaning Cincinnati winning that game. So. Uh, to me, it's um, yeah, it's a soft fade of the Ravens. I, I don't, yeah, I, I understand Andrews, Mark Andrews' angle, but yeah, to me, Tucker's the guy. I'm sure he'll be chalky relative to Baltimore, but again, I think Baltimore is going to be an easy team to lead out or to just fade completely because they're a six and a half point dog right now. So I'll, I'll go Tucker. What about you, uh, Andrew? What are you doing for a kicker? To Greg Joseph again. I don't think the Vikings win this game. Uh, if they do, then you know maybe they put up a shit ton of points. So it's you know again a soft fade on on the Vikings a little bit. Uh, Greg Joseph. Ooh, interesting. All right, Kramer. What do you got? Uh, well, I, I you know you you made a good point earlier when you suggested I shouldn't have played a, cow, a cowboy. So I I changed things up. That a is a disgusting I'm, act. And and seeing as though I just am, a, just a reminder, uh, Justin Jefferson's game log last time against Giants twelve for one thirty three. Oh, Dory Jackson was hurt. Okay. Um, just basic information the public should know. Justin Tucker, I'm also on. Just <laughs> he felt like he added a drip component. He'll and he he'll be chalk at kicker, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, probably. But again, I think a lot of people will leave out the the Ravens. That but too. Again, he's a kicker you've heard of, so I could see him catching I, some heat. It was either, yeah. I mean, I I was considering playing a Baltimore defense when I was sinning earlier and and playing a Cowboy, but since I swapped that out, different situation. This is my uh, last pick as far as the defense. This is probably my most contrarian play. I'm actually taking the Seahawks defense. The logic here is. Brock Purdy is due for a bad game, at least oh, at some point. Turnover we're on the wise. same page. I also have Seattle's and defense. the only way Seattle wins this game and moves on in my mind is if they have a defensive touchdown or a special team touchdown. For them to win that game, I don't see that happening without it. So I think you're kind of covered both ways. And you know, even if 49ers light them up and you don't get much out of your defense, fine, you punt that away. I'm staying away from the Jags and I'm staying away from the Cowboys. Uh, mm. One fade from each side mm. of the conference, but yeah, I'm taking Seattle's defense. To me, this is just a rookie quarterback. You're looking to fade him in the playoffs, and and Brock Purdy, it, it's got to run out a little bit at some point. I, I honestly, and if there's anyone that can figure out an Iowa State quarterback, I think it might be Pete Carroll. I plan on sprinkling Seattle and Miami for most of my defenses. Logic being. I think well, Miami is real interesting too because Allen and the turnovers is a real thing. Yeah, it's not. It's not about giving up points. It's about what you said. And like I like like a Pete Carroll's a defensive coach. He's a hype coach. And if anything funky in this game is going to happen, it's going to be because Seattle's defense, like you said, lights the fire. 
uh, which uh, that's who I'm playing in this lineup. But the case for Miami is pure and simple. Like Buffalo is playing offense right now to turn the ball over. And honestly, the reason I almost played Baltimore too is for the same reason. Like Burrow made some throws last week where he's trying to turn the ball over. So those three will probably be a lot of my defenses. But yeah, I, I went. I, I also went Seattle. I mean, Brock Purdy, man, rookie, making his first start in the postseason. Yeah. Basic ass shit. It's easy like money. Had, like I've been doing this for twenty years. <laughs> Andrew, what do you got for your defense? So to end it out here, I, I actually took the Jags. Um, I, I know the you know the Chargers are high powered, but man, the Chargers can charge her at any given time. And uh, <laughs> I, I went with the defense. I thought had a good chance at potentially scoring a touchdown. You know, I think that that's what you want in your defense if they're going to be a one and done is potential. You know, for a touchdown. So. I, you know, I, I obviously think that this is going to be very contrarian at the defensive point. Um, I think you guys made a lot of good points about who you think should be down there. Uh, I just went with the Jags. Cause I mean, worst case scenario, I get, you know, a couple points from them and, and get to advance Eckler, uh, you know, in my lineup. So went with the Jags. Yeah. I, I probably hmm. need to think about that more. Cause I have not, I'm either playing so far. I'm either like Etienne and Evan Ingram are the guys for the Jags that I've I've played, and then other if I'm not playing those guys, I'm punting. I probably need to consider the, like sprinkling their kicker in as well. I I do try to avoid the cold weather sites. Like I w- it's not optimal for just if it wasn't Justin C- Tucker to have a kicker in Cincinnati there. Um, so that that's also something to think about. That that's a good point. Jack more Jacksonville kicker for me. And Greg Joseph's a great play. I mean, who knows? Maybe he'll get another six point one points at the end of the game. Yeah, no, I mean, there's some there's some guys that we talked about here that I'm thinking because I do think a, a, a Burrow lineup to me is pretty interesting. What other? What well, other? Wait, let's talk about that. Which quarterbacks will you be playing? Like, if you were assuming you, if you could play a lineup with every quarterback, okay, which ones are you saying no thanks to? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, Tua. are you play? Tua, I'm Gino. I'm, I agree. Gino, yeah, I Gino. agree. Dak, never, never playing a Dak lineup. Are you playing a Brock Purdy lineup? Probably. Yeah, no. I don't think so. Cause no. I, I think no to Brock. I, I think in the world where Brock had, if he spreads it around though, fuck. Does he feel like Nick Foles to you a little bit, Sean? You were just talking about your your, your win with You're Nick right. Foles, right? Okay. Like, I, <laughs> I'm I, I just feel like, I mean, he, he, he has a good situation, right. And, and the, and the team overall is good and can make a run. So why yeah, not take it to the super contrarian? You're, you're right. Maybe there is a case. You're right. For, yeah. Brock Purdy should be in my pool. I just don't have Brock playing that fourth game uh, in my model. So that's, that's <laughs> the difference. But to your point, he's a quarterback. He, even if you just looked at it as like, Hey, odds to win the super bowl, you were super objective on it you know, the 49ers and the Eagles odds are pretty similar. And if there, if those outcomes both happen, that would mean Brock Purdy is playing a fourth game. So you could make a pretty good case why you could have Purdy over Hertz. I mean, I think that's crazy, but if you were just looking at like the super bowl odds and stuff like that, there's, there's a case to be made for Brock Purdy and obviously not even factoring in the crazy, crazy, uh, like ownership contrarian that you're getting with the Brock Purdy as well. Yeah, I, I, Je- I, was, I was just Trevor, looking at the list. Trevor I, Lawrence, I think, is out for me, just no, based on yeah, the I'm fact. I'm not playing him. Based on the fact that, like, I just their their path, um, just doesn't make any Herbert, sense. Herbert, I me. see Herbert. I think I. Oh, Herbert could definitely be this year's Joe Burrow, a team that yeah. does better on the road than at home. Their path is all road games. He has a, a ton of great pass catchers that maybe he spreads it out. You know, like we were just talking about like Eckler, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, uh, Gerald Everett, Parham gets a touchdown. He gets a couple QB sneaks like that. I, that formula makes sense. I will me. say for being a five, I've not, I've yet to fade the chargers on any lineup, not even played their kicker. Really? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I mean, you can, cause I can talk myself into four player. I, I mean, I can, I, you know, I can talk myself into Everett even in this format. Like he can have some seven catch games where he gets in the end zone. And again, that point and a half just becomes so valuable. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I I the only other guy who like not not chalk at all who I I think I'm going to play one Lamar lineup. Just just in case. 
if he I'll, if he's just been burn. resting the entire time and and you have a rushing quarterback that has a chance to play. He comes four out, games. he says, "Fuck you, forty-five point game, let's go." Yeah, because who would they play second? The Chiefs. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, you know what? we we got to go back into the lab. Hold on. Sean and I will be doing a show on the pregame. Do you want to agree right now to make it a Lamar team? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't oh. want to lock myself okay. in, but stay tuned. Oh, can we agree to make it a a non-standard quarterback? Yes. No. So not no one in non like hurts Mahomes Allen. I think like, you no. You know what? Let's make it our Burrow. That I know. I just went completely one uh, one eighty here, but let maybe that's the Burrow team. Burrow maybe. or Lamar and uh, SGPN Fantasy Football in the YouTube chat pointing out Chargers don't have the run defense to make a Bengals type run. I mean, their defense has a ton of holes. That's a good. Um, Good point there. Eat etn feels like a smash, chalky um, yeah. this week, but he should eat. Yeah, I, again, that's you know I think by fading etn or just by fading the Jags and the Cowboys completely, that allows me more leverage to be chalkier with the other guys. Yeah, I just think you know, there's also the version where you're you're forcing yourself into a game with a ten point spread. Yeah, and as a, as pointed out in the chat, Roquan Smith just got paid. If that doesn't light a fire under Lamar Jackson, I don't know what is. Yeah. <laughs> Lamar's agent is not happy with the franchise right now. <laughs> and he's going to tell Lamar all about it. Fun times. Fun times. Hey, we got a ton of NFL fantasy content coming at you. Again, uh, make sure you get into our SGPN NFL playoff challenge. We've hmm. teamed up with Homage or Homage there. Uh, we're going to be giving away uh, $300 cash. Hundred dollar SGPN gift card and a hundred dollar homage gift card. Uh, they have a ton of cool retro throwback stuff. I just ordered a Sixers Grateful Dead uh, hoodie. I got a Sixer or sorry, I got an Eagles Grateful Dead T-shirt coming. The the jackets, the starter jackets we have that are really sweet. Those are from Homage SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash Homage uh, to get the gear and then uh, to get involved in the contest. Download the SGPN app and uh, hit the contest there. Good to go. Andrew, always appreciate you calling in here. Make sure you give him a follow on Twitter at a Rob 23. Stay tuned for his FFPC article over on sports gambling podcast.com. Check out all the stuff over uh, all the podcast feeds, everything going over on the SGPN fantasy football feed. And Sean, when, when can people hear us build that lineup? Uh, we're going to be doing a pregame show Saturday, right before the game. Beautiful. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan. I had a dream and Dan Jones did well in the postseason. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>